So the Canon R8 and the Sony FX30 were both released at around about the same time and both definitely pack a huge punch in terms of content creation. Not only that, they hit a budget price point that a lot of people can afford between these two amazing quality cameras. Now even though the price point is budget on both of these cameras, the performance of both of these cameras is definitely anything but budget. So I've used both of these cameras for my professional work for a whole lot of brands including Voice Caddy Australia, 24-7 Golf, uh, Garmin, uh, Rap Soto, I've also done it for 14 Golf Australia, you name it, I have done it with both of these cameras and they can definitely both produce professional work that the clients are happy with. So why did I switch from the Canon R8 to the Sony FX30 when I've gone from a full frame lens over to, or full frame sensor, sorry, over to an APS-C sensor? The first thing that I'll say is coming from the Canon R8 to the Sony FX30, one thing that I did not expect was to get better image quality. In fact, I think that both the image quality between the Canon R8 and the Sony FX30 is both amazing. And I think maybe the Sony FX30 has a little bit better dynamic range, even though it's an APS-C camera. However, the performance that you're getting out of both of these cameras will be top notch. Not only that, a few people have actually knocked the low light capabilities of the Sony FX30 saying that it is an APS-C sensor, so you're not going to have as great a low light performance. However, even in this scenario, you might not be aware, but I'm filming in F4 because I've got a controlled lighting environment and I can control this light and still get a really great quality image and my ISO is only set at 800. My multimetering is at just 0.3, which is basically perfect because I can bring down the shadows a little bit and it performs amazingly well in low light. I mean, I took it into church as well and that was a semi-controlled environment but was still really low light and I was absolutely blown away by the performance of the Sony FX30 and I have the 18 to 105 power zoom lens on here. That gives me an incredible reach of up to around about 157 millimeters equivalent on a full frame camera. So before we dive into the reasons why I switched from Canon to the Sony system, I wanted to give a little bit of a comparison about the type of content that I have created with both of these cameras, because I don't want this to be about one quality is better than the other, when I personally believe that both of these cameras can create amazing quality content for your channel, for your YouTube, for your Instagram, whatever you're going to be using it for, but one still may be better than the other for the application that you're wanting. Now, in terms of the quality, I will say that the Canon R8 definitely gives you that full frame background blur, even when you're filming at F4, which is absolutely phenomenal. And I do really love it. However, if you learn to use the APS-C system and you're using the 18 to 105 here in the Sony, which I'm just gonna throw up on screen right now, you can also position yourself to get really great background blur. And that extra zoom range that you get because it's an APS-C, so it's cropping in a little bit, kind of helps create that blur for you anyway. So as long as you know your way around the systems, you can still get a very comparable image. And I would find it hard press to tell the difference between a full frame camera and the Sony FX30 if it's done correctly and filmed with the right composition. One of the obvious benefits of the Canon R8 over the Sony FX30 is that it is a much better photography camera. Now I'm a videographer so I don't really take a whole lot of pictures. I will take pictures for clients and stuff like that if they need it and I can take good quality pictures but it's not my preference. It's not my love. My love is videography, I love creating, I love seeing effects, I love making different compositions come together, I love being able to see the story get told before I film it and film it and then see what the end product is. That's me. So if you're looking for more of a hybrid camera, the Canon R8 is probably going to be a better camera. The Sony FX30 actually has the same megapixels and you can definitely take photos but it doesn't have a viewfinder. So if you're out in bright harsh sunlight then it's a little bit tricky to see the screen unless you want to go and buy an external monitor and then kind of use that as your viewfinder. Which does bring me to my next point of the Sony FX30 and a bonus and one of the reasons why I actually switched to the Sony system over the Canon is because I feel like the support that Sony gives with its, with its extra apps are way better than Canon. The monitor and control app where you can now literally control all of the functions and features within your camera from an app is incredible and I mean even focus you can even touch focus on this monitor and control app you can walk away from the camera and for someone like me who does a lot of self-filming and self-vlogging even when I'm playing golf on my golf channel like I'm generally the cameraman for myself if other people come on the channel then I'm still the cameraman for them and I can make it look amazing but I don't have a gimbal when I'm filming myself so I need to know that I'm in focus and I need to know that I can trust the equipment that I have and the monitor and control app gives me that availability. Canon Unless there's something that I'm unaware of, currently doesn't have anything like that. And I found that even though the quality of the product is sensational, the intuitiveness behind giving creators something that they can actually utilize outside of the camera is definitely nowhere near where Sony's mark is. 
The other point and the other reason why I personally switched to the Sony FX30 and a big driver of this for me was the internal fan. See with the Canon R8 I could film in 4K60 and I can get amazing quality. Actually I can film in higher frame rates I believe with the Canon R8 because it goes up to 180 frames per second in 1080p but I just can't get that same uh, distance out of the camera that I can with the Sony FX30. And what I mean by that is I can film in 4K60 on the Canon R8. It looks absolutely sensational. It is so crisp. The quality, there is nothing to complain about except I get about 12 minutes before the camera overheats and I probably get about 25 minutes of battery if that when I'm filming in 4K60 with the Canon R8. Now the battery, like I mentioned before, wasn't that much of a problem, but I can just swap it out. However, the overheating means that I would have to stop wait like 20 minutes for the, for the camera to cool all the way back down and then go back again. So the 4K60 was very usable for footage that you're taking quick snaps of, B-roll, all that sort of stuff. If you wanted to film a talking headshot like this, which is actually in 50 frames per second, then you basically just wouldn't be able to do it. Not for a full, not for a full scale interview or anything like that. Whereas the Sony FX30 actually has that internal fan. So that internal fan cools the camera down at the same time, basically meaning that you are never going to overheat this camera. And that is a massive, massive bonus for me because a lot of the work that I'm doing and a lot of the filming that I'm doing here on the Gold Coast is in a warmer climate. If you're overseas in the States, it's probably like Florida. So if I'm talking uh, our temperatures here, it's generally anywhere between 25 to 35 degrees. In summer, it's a little bit warmer than that. But if I'm out and I'm filming quite often long videos where I'm doing, you know, uh, product reviews or explaining different shots or playing golf rounds and things like that, where I actually have the camera filming me for 25, 30 minutes straight, then really this Sony FX30 is the best option for me. The next thing comes into the lenses. Now, a lot of people will talk about that Sony has a massive range of lenses to choose from and third-party lenses, and that is definitely a bonus. However, Canon do have an expanding range, which is continuing to expand of great and affordable lenses. My favorite lens of all time with the Canon, which I gave to my mate Paulie, who actually gave me uh, this Sony ZV-E10 as well, is the 35mm 1.8 lens. Now that lens was sensational. It was so sharp and I really, really love the 35mm field of view on a full frame camera. They also have other L lenses which are still within the budget price point of I think around about $1,800 or, or $2,000 Australian, which is a 24 to 105 f4 L. Now that lens again is sensational and I would definitely put that lens in the professional category. However, that is actually more expensive than its comparable one which I'm kind of using right now. Now this sort of compares to it but it also kind of goes a little bit further and that is the Sony 18-105 to f4 power zoom lens. So this is also a constant aperture of f4 however it has a power zoom function which for me is absolutely awesome because I can zoom into the goal ball after I hit it and it also gives me a longer field of view. It gives me that 18mm which I think is around about 27mm on a full frame camera if I'm correct maybe a little bit less but then it goes out to about 157 mil on the top end. So I'm getting a much wider range. And I actually bought this lens at a bargain for under 600 bucks, brand new here in Australia. So I could have bought three of these lenses for the price of one of the Canons. So why would someone choose the Canon R8 over the Sony FX30? Well, it is a full frame camera. So if you're wanting that full frame field of view and you're happy to pay the extra money on the lenses, then it will definitely be everything that you've wanted it to be and more. I also like the ecosystem of Canon. I feel like the functions through the function systems are very easy to navigate. Sony has updated this in the Cine line, but I still find Sony's user interface and that just clunky. It's, it's just not clean. Canon's is clean. I like the way that they've got the drop downs from the top. You can scroll through the menus and things just seem to be in the Canon where they should be. In the Sony, you've got to go through the menu system and you can get quite deep in the menu system before you're actually finding things that you're wanting to find. One of the other things that I really love about the Sony system is that I believe and I feel that the S-Log3 just seems to be easier to color grade than C-Log3. I don't really know why and maybe this is just a user thing. Maybe it's more me that I wasn't really grading C-Log3 or exposing it the right way. But I just found that if you nailed C-Log3 then it was fantastic. But if you use S-Log3, you can pretty much get it most of the time if your exposure is somewhere between 1.3 stops over to 1.7, even two stops over. And you're going to be able to recover those highlights. You're going to be able to get rid of most of the grain in your image. And you're going to be able to have a really high quality image. I find that with the Canon in C-Log3, if I missed it by a little bit, I would add grain and then I would just destroy the highlights. And even though I'm using those same parameters, parameters 
it would just be trickier to get a high quality image, even though it was a full frame sensor. Anyway guys, so short video, that's it from me today. Which one would you choose, the Sony FX30 or the Canon R8? Which would you have as your content creation beast? I absolutely love the FX30, definitely not turning back. I love the tele lights that come on the front when you're recording to say that you're recording. I love the autofocus in it. The Canon also had that as well and was an exceptional, exceptional camera. But that fan really got me. That fan in this climate for what I personally do is what swayed me into the Sony FX30 because outside of that, if I go into the Canon and I'm trying to get something comparable with a fan in the Canon, I'm looking at the R5C, which costs thousands of dollars more and the Sony FX30 just offers it right there. A couple of hundred bucks more than the Canon, cheaper lens options. It was a bit of a no-brainer for me. The monitor and control app and a couple of the extra other features got me over the line as well. But Sony has done an incredible job at capturing the audience of social media creators and content creators for their budget price points, incredible lens options, and incredible features such as that fan. But that's it for me today, guys. Make sure you smash that like button, comment a positive comment. If you've got any questions, throw it in the comment section, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.